You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until Hey everybody, Brian Johnson here from the 7 Minute Security Podcast. Uh, excited to start a new series with you today called DIY $500 Pen Testing Lab. And basically what I'm trying to show you is that for 500 bucks, you can buy some decent hardware, make yourself an ESXi host, and then be able to spin up Kali VMs, VMs from VolnHub.com, uh, and have those tucked away on an isolated part of your network so you can sniff traffic, run better cap, those sort of things without disrupting your work network or home network. Because I know for me, uh, if my Apple TV goes down because of my shenanigans, my wife is not happy. Um, but let's take a look at the grocery list uh, and some of the things you'll need to get started. Now, as you can see here, I plucked all my goods off of Amazon. Uh, I started with an Intel NUC kit for 289 bucks. And it can, it's got two slots for memory uh, and you can max it out at 32 gigs so to kind of keep this more in the you know starter kit category I just got it launched with uh, a single dim of 16 gigs for 60 bucks um, I also put in Samsung 850 Evo 500 gigabyte drive in there for 160 bucks and that'll run you just a little over 500 and change minus uh, you know tax and shipping and whatnot now, if you wanted to go more for the tricked out model, here's a slightly modified grocery list where uh, you'd add that additional 16 gigs of memory for 60 bucks. And um, the NUC has an M2 slot in it as well. So I threw in a Samsung SM951 128 gig drive for 100 bucks. So your tricked out option ends up being about 660. So here's just a little shot of everything as it comes in the boxes. Of course, maybe I should have taken a picture of the RAM when there was actually a RAM in there, but uh, nevertheless. What I really like about this setup is that I'm not somebody who likes to tinker and solder and pull things apart. Um, all the hardware for this kit is very easy to put together. There are just four screws on the bottom. You loosen those, pull those up, and then for the most part, everything just snaps, clips, slides right in. So there's the SSD drive on top, just slides right in that little chassis. Uh, the memory and other M2 hard drive just snap into place. Actually, the M2 drive has a single screw that you have to screw in, but um, that's it. It's about a, a five minute, if that, assembly. Put the four screws back in, and uh, you're just about ready to, to uh, power this beast up and get going. Now, really, the only other thing you need is ESXi boot media, which, uh, if you look in the show notes on 7ms.us, for today's episode, which is 224, uh, you'll see that I've, I've written them out in long format. And um, also, if you don't mind me doing a shameless plug, I just want to point you briefly to the BPATI project, my little GitHub doc documentation project. Uh, it has got uh, these instructions as well, just under BPATI. Uh, and then if you look under command line and Mac, I've got the instructions for imaging a USB drive using an ESXi ISO right here for you. So once you've created your boot media, you boot the NUC from it, you install ESXi back to the USB drive, follow the wizards, and then bam, your machine should boot, grab a DHCP address, and then the last thing I'd recommend, it's hard to see here, but you hit F2, and then you'll have to enter your root username and password. But this allows you to go in and turn on SSH because it is disabled by default. So uh, we'll come up here to a menu where we will choose troubleshooting options in about the middle there. And then enable SSH will be what you'll want to hit the first time so that you can get in and run the command line tools, uh, set up syslog, that kind of stuff. There's certain things that are easier to do in command line versus the GUI. So then from your laptop or desktop, hit the IP address of your new Spankin ESXi machine, and uh, now you can you know, download the vSphere client, or uh, what I've been doing is just controlling my VMs uh, through the web interface, which seems to work pretty well. 
Uh, it's a little flaky at times, and by flaky I just mean you have to reload the interface sometimes to get get uh, status reporting properly on all the machines. But there we go. This is my little playground that I've started building, and uh, I will go into this in, in much more detail in the next episode. Uh, we'll talk about how to assign, uh, set up the networking, set up uh, VLANs, and then uh, make sure on your, you know, your router or your firewall that you've got this pen testing VLAN completely siloed so that it doesn't jack with any other part of your network and uh, make people red hot mad. So that's what I got for you today, folks. Thanks a lot for uh, watching and listening, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a great day. You've been watching or listening to an episode of 7 Minute Security, a weekly podcast focusing on IT and information security topics, such as penetration testing, network configuration, virtualization, and career advice. For more information, visit www.7ms.us.